Greetings folks, in this video I'm going to be having a look at the Twin Protocol SR8 receiver from FRSky. So that is a stabilised 8 channel receiver. Uh, it is pretty much exactly the same as the GR8, the glider receiver that I reviewed about a week ago, but it has added stabilisation. Um, so I think it has uh, an onboard barometer as well, so you can get uh, vario features uh, as well as stabilization so be a good receiver for stabilizing a glider i guess i've got it on my alba bird because that's nice and loose and will show up the stabilization pretty well it's a bit of a tricky setup uh, it, this is a very new receiver and the manual hasn't been refined i don't think there's a few mistakes in the manual setting up the the calibrating the different uh, axes, uh, it's, it's got the wrong illustrations in there, I think it's just confusing. And there's a tiny, tiny little graphic that shows you which direction you have to mount the receiver. Uh, I think that should be printed on the receiver rather than just hidden as a tiny little graphic. I've worked my way through it with the help of um, Steve, FR Sky Steve's um, article about how to set up these stabilised receivers. I've got it working quite nicely. Uh, you can also have hover and um, knife edge mode, but uh, I'm not going to try them at this stage. I think I'll wait a bit more until uh, there are firmware updates and it's all settled down. But anyway, let's go for a bit of a fly and then we'll go back and I'll show you the setup routine uh, and have a closer look at the receiver. So we'll start off in stabilised mode. That's stabilised mode. It is a very nice mode to fly in. I have a gain knob as well. This is on maximum gain. So back to manual mode now. This is what it's like flying in manual mode. Nice and loose. Stabilised mode now so I can take the fingers off the sticks and it will just keep flying. Nice and level or not so much level but whatever this is like acro mode in in inav i guess it will just maintain the attitude keep on flying very nice indeed cool playing the old elbow bird now we're in self-level mode, so that levels it out and uh, just flies level, as long as you've done the self-check routine correctly. I think I'm descending a little bit, so I might have to redo the, the self-check level. Uh, you need to lift the nose up a bit when you do the, the level calibration, but pretty much it's working well. Stabilise mode again. Now let's try going from manual mode, I'm in manual mode now, and out of whack straight into self-level mode. And that worked very well. That's like a get out of trouble mode. Self-level. Seems to be going to the left a little bit. What I'm finding is the self-level doesn't find the exact level all the time. That's going pretty well. So I may need to redo the uh, self check again. I'm on maximum gain at the moment. I can turn it down. That's half gain now. With this plane, it doesn't really feel a lot different. Uh, but I believe with more twitchy planes, it'll if you, the gain is up too high, it will um, oscillate like that maybe. But yeah, this is, this plane's pretty forgiving, so we're going well. There's manual mode again. Stabilised mode, that will just fly off into the distance. And self-level mode, yes, yeah, definitely descending at the moment. So I do need to do that self-check again with the nose up a little bit. 
And although I haven't tried it out, you, you do get the Vario as well. I have seen the telemetry includes altitude and vertical speed, so must have a barometer on board as well. Self-level. Going a little bit nose down. I'll try a, a self-level redo uh, out in the field. I've got a bit of a wonky field here, but I need to lift the nose up a little bit. Keep it level. Something like that. Then we go to system, go to the lure script, open him up, stabilizing self level check. So we have an LED in here, it's blue. When we enable the self check, enable, we'll get a red, a orange light, then it starts flashing. Then you do your stick movements. And when it's done, stops flashing, and we get the servo dance. So what it's doing when the when you enable the self check for the first few seconds, it's detecting the center positioning on the sticks, not the rudder, uh, not the throttle. When it starts flashing, it's waiting for you to uh, move the sticks f through the, the full movement, full full range of movement, and it's it's. Um, calibrating the full movement of the sticks. But anyway, let's try that now. We should have a bit of a nose up when we go into self-level mode. Get a bit of height. Yeah, that's a nice self-level mode now. That's a nice safe mode. Let's try get ourselves in, in trouble and then self-level. There we go. Yeah, that's working nicely. That's what we want. Cool. All right, so we're pretty good now. Just have to get the uh, attitude of the plane right, the flying level level rather than just the plane level when you do the self-check yeah that, that's beautiful excellent cool we're on top of it now all right very good all right we're going to have a look at the receiver on the bench here's the packaging same as the gr8 we get uh, spare antennas as previously and a couple of uh, input cables Here's the receiver, TWSR8, and I've mounted it on this little bit of plastic so that we can mount it in the uh, plane. Now, it's important to know that this is the front of the receiver, not that end. Uh, it would be nice to have a little arrow showing you which is the front end, because that's important. And if you go through the manual and try and find out where it tells you, it's um, pretty well hidden. So anyway, we have six channels on the left-hand side, channels seven and eight on the right-hand side with S bus in and S bus out. And there's the S port and F port and the two sleeved antennas. Now, the first thing to do is make sure that all the firmwares are up to date. Uh, Ethos is updated firmware of the, the receiver, although this is brand new, so it only has the original, uh, the internal module, all of that sort of stuff. External module, they're all uh, up to date. Now I'll quickly show you how to set up a model for this particular receiver. Let's go to model select, let's start up a new model, create model, choose aeroplane and we get the question are you using a self-stab receiver from FR Sky? Well this SR8 twin isn't in the list so I would just advance out of there. Engine on one channel, Ailerons on two channels, traditional tail, elevator and rudder on their channels, and that shows you where to plug things in. Aileron one on channel one, aileron two, channel five, elevators channel two, throttle channel three, rudder channel four, and you have to do it that way. 
Now we need to add a mode switch and a gain knob. So we'll hit the plus, add a free mix, last position. Choose the switch you want to use for your modes, your three modes that is. And assign that to channel 14. Now if you are going for the uh, hover and knife edge you would set up another switch on channel 15 but that um, if you have a look in the manual it uh, confuses matters a fair bit with the switch position so I'm not going to do that. Uh, so now we will add the gain knob, another free mix, I'll put it in the last position and source will be whichever knob you want to use. I'm going to use the pot 2. That goes on channel 13. Now the pot value goes from minus 100 to plus 100. You only want the gain to go from 0 to 100. Although I think this particular receiver can handle the minus 100 and, and interpret that as meaning plus 100. But anyway, we'll, we'll add a curve to restrict the output from 0 to 100. Uh, so in this section, always on weight. We'll edit that and change the weight to a curve. Then we'll set up the curve. Add type custom points. We can drop the points down to two points. And now we'll define the points. Our first point stays where it is at zero. Second point, we need to lift that up to 100. And that's all done. Now you can see on the little output graph there, the gain only goes from zero up to 100. So if we look at the outputs now, that's one to eight. There's the gain knob output going from 0 to 100. And here's my mode switch here. Now what you also have to do is go to the, down, the FRS Guide downloads and download the stabilization Lua script. Eventually this will all be included in the device configuration in Ethos, but it's not there yet. There it is there, but it doesn't work for this receiver. So we need to use the Lua script. So need to down that, download that Lua, Lua script and uh, copy it into the scripts folder on the SD card. And when you do that, you'll get these three extra little uh, Lua scripts here. So, so this is where we do the setting up of the stabilization. We'll go back to our pre-selected pre-setup model uh, and I'll plug our receiver in. The blue light so that's working we've got a db reading up there so that's good now we can go to the lua scripts and sr basic uh, so we've got to tell it we're using the i'm using the external module there and click open imu mode we get the choice of off basic or advanced now advanced isn't working yet i don't think uh, with advanced you can use the uh, configurator on a PC. I'm using a Mac so I can't use that at the moment but I don't think that's quite ready yet anyway so we'll leave it at basic. It's back out of there. Then we do the calibration. With all these stabilization receivers you need to do the uh, gyro and accelerometer calibration or the accelerometer calibration and you just follow the prompts on the screen there. Uh, now this is uh, press model to use the internal module and the current is internal we're using the external module so it says press sys to uh, use the external module or press sys and that has now changed to current is external place your receiver horizontal and top up which i've done okay press it top down Place it vertical with pins up. Now, which pins are we talking about? Those pins or those pins? Uh, let's try these pins here. Press enter. No, it's not taking it, so it must be the other ones. Let's put it up the other way. Yep, so that's entered it there. Pins down. 
that's good. Place it so the lettering is legible, like that. Now this is wrong. If I do that, it's just going to keep waiting as not accepting it. So what we actually need to do is place it up the other way. There we go, that's done it. And calibration is finished now. So they haven't quite caught up with this receiver. The uh, instructions tell you to do it the wrong way around, but at least uh, it knows what it's expecting to see. So you can't really ma make a mistake there. It'll just confuse you. And now we can look at SRX stable. Again, we're external module, open. Turn the stabilizing on or off so you can use it just as a normal receiver. And we're in quick mode. Uh, if you disable quick mode, then you uh, then it assumes you're going to use hover and knife edge, which, I, as I said, is, is just too confusing to start off with. So leave it in quick mode, quick mode enable. Self-check, this is where we do the level checking, like we did out in the field. Uh, I won't do that at the moment. Now this says uh, one and two. There are actually two banks of, of uh, channels that can be stabilized. There's 1 to 6 and 7 to 11. So uh, if you want to go, you push the center button to go to the other uh, bank of channels. I've got that turned off at the moment. Uh, I don't need that. Let's get out of there. Now in this screen, we can choose the wing type, normal, delta or v-tail, uh, mounting type, horizontal, vertical, horizontal reverse and vertical reverse. I don't even understand what they're talking about there. Uh, we need some demo, you need some uh, diagrams to show what they're talking about. Uh, you can choose whether channel five is aileron or an, or a, a spare auxiliary channel. Same with channel six. When you're starting off, all of these should be set to normal. This is the stabilization direction, uh, but you go back later on and and change these, invert these if the stabilization direction is going in the wrong direction. And you can change the gains for each of these things: uh, stability gain. Auto level gain, hover gain, knife edge gain, uh, lots of stuff to play with. Auto level offset here as well. Uh, with mine flying a little bit uh, down to the left when in auto level, I could have uh, tweaked the offset here a little bit to level it out even better. So the thing with these receivers is that they are very, very configurable. And once it gets integrated into Ethos, it'll be a lot easier as well. It's a little bit tricky at the moment. Now let's have a look at what telemetry we can get from this receiver. Let's uh, hit on discover. And we have accelerometer X, altitude, receiver battery, ADC2, RSSI, RX, Z accelerometer, VFR, Y accelerometer, vertical speed, that's the vario, uh, roll angle and pitch angle. And so because we can see altitude and vertical speed, that shows that uh, we do have a barometer on board and we can use it as a Vario receiver as well. So there we have the twin protocol, SR8 stabilized and uh, Vario enabled glider the receiver. Bit of a tricky setup, but uh, highly configurable. And once they get all the ethos integration working properly and sort out the manual to show the correct orientations and all that sort of thing. Um, it should be a very useful receiver. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. The number you have dialed is not in service at this time.